guys, I am uh, here working on a, a walnut bookcase, uh, kind of like a library, and uh, it it's, goes all the way up to the roof, and I'll show you the design of it, but we've got to find some angles. We've got to do some interesting angles on a, on a face frame, and so I have a way that I like to do angles, which I think is a little bit more accurate than actually punching in angles and trying to deal with angle finders and all that fun stuff like that, and I do them by simple measurements, and I actually never touch an angle finder or um, a protractor or anything like that until the very end. Um, so I'll show you kind of how I do that as, uh, uh, as I'm putting this space frame together. Here we are. This is the, uh, the, the library um, bookcase thing that we're going to be doing here. This is going to be a really cool one. And um, for this guy, we got to do a couple of things. There's also going to be a, a, a ladder that goes down there. And, rolls but there's two hard parts about this thing uh, one the hardest part is going to be these curves right there that's gonna be super fun and difficult and then the second hardest thing is going to be this top section with these angles up here on this face frame and we also got some angles on the casework and on, also on the nailer right there uh, so this is what we are going to uh, to explore today is I have a, a a method which I like to use to to get these angles right and it includes no protractors it includes no angle finders um, now because I have SketchUp which is this program I can find this without doing what I'm going to show you but even still I don't I don't like to use just the program I like to do it the the, the way I've always done it. Um, so th this, if I want to, I can simply come up, make this component real quick, and then I can move this. And over on the bottom right, it says about 76.6. Um, you can see over right here, uh, it's that, that angle. Um, and it says it's, a, it's about 76.6. And sure, I could go take that over to my to my miter saw and do my best with that, um, but it just makes me uncomfortable just to go off of what the the computer program says. On that, I'd rather go on um, exact measurements, um, just the way I've always done it. And if you don't have a computer program, this is how I would suggest um, for you to find these angles. Um, and it has nothing to do with a with an angle gauge. It just has to do with a tape measure. So, um, and if Obviously, a tape measure doesn't have angles on it, so I use um, no no angles, only only tape measurement measurements. So, how we're gonna do this is we're gonna take one of these face frames. We're gonna take uh, these front these front of the cases are called face frames. Um, so we're gonna take these two pieces, this one and that one. We're gonna cut them straight at the high points. So that are longest measurement here I'm going to cut this guy straight at 10 and 31 64 and we're going to take this guy and cut this one straight at 10 and 7 30 seconds fun so we're going to do that and we're going to do straight and then we'll, by uh, riding on those high points we're going to be able to get this angle right without ever taking an angle gauge or a protractor. Um, I don't even really find a lot of trust in the pro protractors and stuff. So, yep, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna find that, that angle, and we're also gonna find the length of this top piece, this thing right there. So all of these pieces, they're all the same. We're gonna get all of this without having to make a template, without having to find these angles. It's just gonna go straight from the piece, straight from the tape measure to, uh, to the end result. And I think it's the fastest and most accurate. Here we are at the workbench, and we're gonna find that angle. So this is a expensive angle finder, and I'm not even gonna use it for finding the angle. I'm gonna use it as a straight edge. Um, so we're gonna take our pieces. If you remember the model I just showed, we said we're gonna go off of the face frame members. Now this is the smallest uh, face frame uh, styles right here, and we are going to line them up the bottom with our finger, because our finger is very, very sensitive, and we can feel when it's perfect. Now I'm going to turn this, hold them together, and I'm going to ride my straight edge along the high points, the highest point, which is the corner, 
And once I have this, there we go, I strike a line. Make sure it's in there. Now, once I cut this off, this is our correct angle there. I'm here at the miter saw. You don't have to do this with the miter saw. I can actually do this at the sander, um, the, the belt sander and, or the disc sander and just work that to its, to its line and, and it's just as accurate. But I'm gonna come here to the, the miter saw since I have it and I'm, now I can use the, the laser and really get that dialed in right. Okay, and that looks about good, I think. Come on, a little more. There we go. Now we have our angles here. The same for this one. find our angles and I always say if you can avoid using angles and even measurements at times if you can and go straight to the real workpiece it's the most accurate thing you can do because there's always a little bit lost in translation going from the piece to the uh, for the cut list uh, to the uh, to the saws I mean just minute fractions but if you can do it exact it's always the best so here we're going to get the last bit of the puzzle piece. Here's a, a face frame that I, I included, and this is the front of the, uh, the cabinets in the back. You see it's just attached with glue and with pocket screws here. But we're going to get this last piece uh, on, on the, uh, the program because it's at an angle. It was something like 15 64ths or something like that. I don't even want to mess with figuring out what that'll look like on my saw and then recreating it and, and then if and then if you know have a bunch of them and it's off a little bit it, it's just not something you want to mess with so as long as your face frame is square and it is I can just take my two uh, two and a quarter inch stock here and simply lay it over the top like this as long as it even there and there Mark it, and that's my angle. Okay, and here we are at the end. Now we have uh, our face frame, and we never took a protractor to the uh, to the piece. We never uh, we never tried to find that angle and tried to translate that into our machines and and get our length of of this top piece and all this kind of stuff like that. We just did the whole thing by measurements. Um, so without using an angle gauge or an angle finder or protractor. We got this difficult angle done and our difficult length up here on this top piece all with just using our tape measure. And we got this one and we got all of these ones. And these ones are all finished. They are uh, beautifully sanded and uh, ready for a, a coat of sealer. Getting ready for a, a, a top coat of lacquer. We have more of them over here. That one is getting some, some epoxy on it to fill a, fill a crack. More face frames. We got three of them over there. One on the workbench, and we got three more face frames over there. So good day work. And for 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 those who don't know, high quality cabinets. Well, I won't say high quality, but I say my style of cabinets and uh, really strong cabinets. They're actually made in two parts. The first thing and the most important thing. Uh, that, that gives it the strength is actually the face frame. And so this is actually going to be the front of, uh, of cabinets that, uh, that uh, strengthens it up. This is also what the doors are going to be attached to. And uh, if you guys are looking for really strong cabinets, make sure you look for something with a face frame. Well, thanks for coming along with me for this ride of showing you guys how I got these angles and, uh, and, and this length of this top piece without touching a, uh, an angle gauge or, a gauge or a protractor, only using our tape measure. Thanks.